This week we have a really great topic. Um, but before we get started, I would like to thank our sponsors for donating this awesome meal that you're all enjoying at this moment. Uh, <laughs> all right. So before we get started with our speaker today, um, are there any community announcements? Uh, Brett, right this way, my friend. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? This is my dog, Queenie. She's not making an announcement. It's just me. But she said that she needed to come with me. So uh, I think probably most of you know by now that I'm involved with planning um, a major conference here in Chattanooga, a tech conference that's happening at the end of Startup Week this year. That is October, I think, 26 and 27. It's a Friday, Saturday, two-day conference, um, single track. We're bringing in, I think it's 16 speakers um, from all over, including one from Sweden? Yeah, I think that's where the university is at. Um, one John Hughes, who is one of the designers of the Haskell language. Um, so the conference is Gig City Elixir, and um, Early Bird ends next week. So you want to get in on that. Tickets are 350. It's a uh, it's a little unusual for Chattanooga. It's a world class lineup. We have, I guess you could say, we have like four keynote speakers. Um, they've all given keynotes on probably at least three continents each. Um, they're leaders in their respective fields. Um, it's called Gig City Elixir, but um, oh, go it's stage. about much more than that. Um, it doesn't really matter the area that you're working in, whether you're working in a OO language at your job or functional or what have you, you'll be able to take a lot of the principles that you learn at this conference and apply them in your job, your day to day. Um, it's a lot about foundational um, concepts. We're not really focusing on frameworks as much as the foundational concepts. So um, I'm really excited about it. Um, it's been a pretty big undertaking so far. Would love to have some community support. Um, right now, most of the folks that I think have bought tickets are from outside Chattanooga, actually. Um, so we'll have a lot of folks flying in from all over the U.S. Um, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. I'll be there. Hope to see y'all there. That's all I've got. All right. Thanks so much, Brett. And also Anna Sherman, come on up. Hey guys, um, I'm Anna Sherman. Like Dante said, um, I'm the organizer of Code XX. And we're having an event August 22nd at 6.30 on this floor, probably in that room over there. Um, it's going to be on adding users and authentication in a Rails app. Um, it is the women's tech meetup, but everyone is welcome to come. We just want people to be supportive and help empower women learning technology. So if, you, if that's a skill that you want to learn to do, authentication and all of that, please come sign up. We're on meetups. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right, so I would like to present you all with our speaker today, Brian Cherry. Come on up. Thanks. Hello. He's got it back there. All right, good. Still a little bit of feedback. All right, so hello. Thank, I want to thank uh, Dante and the Cha Dev community to uh, ask me to present. Um, I've had one of my guys that works on my team uh, is part of the Cha Dev community as well. Our last corporate event on phishing, and this community probably would like to hear about it. And so um, today we're going to talk about phishing, um, risk or annoyance or all of the above. Okay. Um, and just as an FYI, I, do you want me to just do the hand mic? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's, we'll go with that. All right, so I work at Blue Cross Blue Shield. I am one of the directors in information security. So that's kind of where I, where I sit these days. And we'll go through our phishing presentation. Um, there's, a, there's a bit in here in terms of 
uh, what is it, why is it a problem, what do we look for, and what can we do about it? Uh, so fishing is broad topics. Um, I mean, there's multiple areas of it. So fishing in general is mass market email sent out to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, the exact same message, just trying to get people to click, right? Um, spear phishing, they're going after you. They've targeted you for some reason, some way, shape, or form. Um, a lot of why they know that they can target you is what are you posting on social media? What's your LinkedIn look like? I just liked this conference that I just attended. I just stayed at this really cool resort, which now becomes a method of saying, you, I know something about you, and let me send you something that looks really, really cool. Hopefully you click on it. Um, could be a link, could be an attachment. Uh, whaling, so they, at that point, they're going after the CEO, they're trying to um, really get those guys, um, CFOs, COOs, C-level folks, um, more than likely using spear phishing, but they're, they're targeting them from a, from a whaling perspective, right? Not just, they found something about you and trying to spear fish you. Uh, now, BEC is business email compromise. Really, 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 really where most of the criminals are spending their time because they're sending emails to the finance department or the accounts payable department saying, hey, I'm your vendor and I just changed my bank account last week. Can you update your records? All right, so that $100,000 or $100 million uh, contract that just was announced in the news all of a sudden, the finance department is getting an email that says, hey, we're changing our account bank routing information. Please update your records so next week when you pay for that contract, that money goes bye-bye, right? So um, this is where a lot of folks are spending their time from a criminal aspect because there's dollars involved. Uh, clone phishing, so who knows, right? Um, take company X who sends out some a uh, community email that has a certain flavor, well, all I gotta do now is just kinda copy the same context, change the word, change the link in the click me here section, and I resend it to some level of community, and it looks like it came from me. It could be Blue Cross, it could be EPB, could be any number of, you know, somebody that they're wanting to clone uh, the message. Smishing. Uh, it's a, it's out there, um, it happens. Um, so basically you get the same type of fish happening to your cell phone. They send you a text message that says, your bank account has been compromised. Click here to update your new credentials. Same kind of concept. It's just it's sending it to your text, um, to your phone, which there's less capability to verify is it a, actual email via the headers, via the what's the links look like, you know, the hover over, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then vishing is just the normal, hey, this is Bob with the IRS. We are starting an investigation of you. Uh, I need to verify all of your information to make sure you are who you are. Please give me your name and your address and your date of birth and your social. Now they can go file tax returns as you. Um, so, those are kind of the what's out there. Um, we'll go through general phishing as we go through the rest of this, but um, because smishing is kind of interesting, it uh, doesn't happen, we don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, we've got a little video um, from a security awareness um, standpoint. The public becomes more aware about the threat of phishing emails. Hackers are being forced to change their tactics. What follows is an increasingly common method hackers are using in order to scam their victims. And can I get that with the dressing on the side? Oh, and a glass of iced tea. Thank you. So, what did Terry say when you told her that? She completely agreed, and now both of us have been assigned to the account. Oh, no. What's wrong? I just got this alert from my bank. It says they're freezing my account because of suspicious activity. Is there a link attached to the message? Yeah. Don't click it. What? Why? It could be a phishing attack. 
But it's from my bank. They send me text notifications like this all the time. Can I see the message? Yep, it's a scam. But this isn't an email, it's a text message. So how could this be a phishing scam? Now that the public has become more aware of phishing emails and companies have gotten better at filtering them out, hackers have had to come up with alternative ways of hacking people. And one of those alternatives is this, smishing. Smishing? I've never heard of that. It stands for SMS phishing. SMS is the short message service that allows you to send text messages from mobile devices. So smishing is the same thing as phishing, only it comes through text messages instead of email. Right. You see, most people trust SMS text messaging more than they trust email, especially if it looks like the text was sent from a trusted source, like one of your personal contacts or... Or your bank. But the same security rules and precautions that apply to email should also be applied to text messages, which includes not clicking on any suspicious or unexpected links. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I did click the link? You'd probably be routed to a web page that would ask for the login credentials you use for your bank. And as soon as you entered the information, the hackers would get into your account and empty out everything they could. They can do that? Absolutely. The other possibility is that it could install a piece of malware onto your device, which would text message everyone in your contacts with the same smishing message. Or it could act like a keystroke logger collecting everything you type into your device, including sensitive credentials you might use to log onto our company network. So what should I do with the smishing text? First thing you should do is delete it to get it off your device. Second, contact your bank and let them know what's happened. Lastly, become more aware about the threats that are out there. Never trust any link that seems suspicious or gets sent to you unexpectedly. And always verify any links with a phone call to the alleged sender. Definitely. I will. Perfect timing. And you know what? Lunch is on me. Please, Megan, that's not necessary. I insist. I mean, who knows how much money and time you could have saved me? Treating you to lunch is the least I can do. Well, in that case, waiter, I'll take another look at that menu. <laughs> so, from a security awareness standpoint, um, we're moving to this type of format. Uh, it provides a little bit better uh, engagement with the people that are watching it. Uh, it's a little bit better to understand. It's really laid out well from a what's the problem, you know, what do you need to know, what's the keywords you need to focus on, and then showing you, you know, what you need to do um, as, as an end user, right? Um, because one of the things from a security awareness standpoint that phishing is not a corporate problem, it's an end-user problem, whether you're at home, at your grandparents' house, or your parents are calling you, hey, I've got this email. It, it's, a, it's a people problem, right? It's not a corporate problem. So uh, some stats over the next couple slides. Um, phishing has been on the rise over the uh, X number of years. I'll, I'll say it the last 10 years, easy. Uh, and then why? It's extremely profitable. Um, what drives bad guys' actions? Money. So, uh, as you can see, uh, phishing attacks are averaging for, for companies that are about a thousand or ten thousand people or, or more. You know, lots, three point seven million. They're having to deal with. Now, that's not just the money lost via the BEC type of attacks, but that's you know the investments in technology, the investments in security awareness, the the professional, the security professionals that they have to put in place, the the additional layers of security. So it's it's all of that that gets wrapped up into to that number, but that's a lot of money just because people are sending fake emails. Okay, um, now uh, it's easy to implement. All you have to have is a fake email address, and you just send emails to email lists that you gather. Right, so it's really easy. You don't have to have a lot of knowledge to do it. Uh, it requires you and me to pay attention, which a lot of times doesn't happen, so people click, uh, which they're, they're hoping for. And it's hard to detect with technology specifically, right? So um, there's some technologies that, that you can use, but again, it's, it's, it's real fluffy at times, um, and it's not a technology problem. It's a user awareness problem. All right. So just to, from an analysis type standpoint, 
we'll see that in, this is the susceptibility rates. So susceptibility is the number of kind of clicks that are occurring that this particular vendor, um, one of the phishing vendors uh, has, has done a study on. And they're saying from 15 to 17, the rate of click has gone down, which is a good thing. Uh, but it's still, 10% is still a really high number. Um, so then, well, let's talk about some of the emotional triggers that we see. Again, it's the same study from the vendor. Uh, so they're saying that entertainment type of fish, and then social, and then reward recognition, and so forth, are, are the top layers. Um, now, it did break it down, and I'm going to tell you, in the entertainment area, it holiday e-card alerts. You've got a Valentine from a special admirer. You know, people click on that. Uh, the hey, we've got a, a Lunar New Year. You know, it's coming. There's a celebration. There's a you know, there's something. Uh, it happens. Is the holiday e-card, whether it is entertainment based, social based, or reward and recognition, that is a continuing topic, the continuing uh, area that they're hitting. Uh, one of the interesting things that I saw that you would recognize on the curiosity line item there is things like the state bar association is filing a grievance, you know, a grievance is being filed against you with the state bar. Well, oh, I, I, what is that? What, you know, what's happening? Your curiosity is going to say, let me click on that and see what that is. Is that my neighbor down the street that I had the argument with last week? You know, I don't know. Uh, but that's the a really high one. And then the, what they call the Board of Accountancy complaint filed. I, you know, maybe you're late on payment to EPB. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're going to uh, trigger. The next is the content type that has gets that gets the most clicks. Again, social and then safety is getting the most clicks. Guess what the social most click type of is related to content? E-cards, Valentine, wishing you a bir happy birthday, Merry Christmas. Oh, let's, let's label them, right? We've got uh, uh, Boss's Day. You've got, you know, uh, um, Valentine's Day, I mean, 4th of July, I mean, you've got all of these holidays that people are sending you an e-card, you know, and lots of people want to click on them because, well, they, somebody's paying attention to me. That's, that's kind of where that happens, right, from a social standpoint. Uh, the safety, so if somebody sends an email that's from the health department that we found mold in your office, that was one of the highest ones, uh, as well as bed bugs found in the office, uh, as well as your safety training is out of date. You know, again, depending on the office setting, maybe you don't have that safety net, but maybe you are one of those groups that has to do safety training quarterly. You know, maybe that's maybe they know that. Uh, retail, easy. FedEx, you got a U, UPS, FedEx, you got a, a shipment. Here's your link. Track it, right? Um, and employee benefit, it's way down here on toward the bottom, but those are really easy because you, you send them in October, open enrollment, your benefits package is changing, click here. Um, anytime you can send, hey, there's new PTO, uh, paid time off benefits are changing, click here. Um, or our rewards program for doing really well. We've, you know, we're now going to give everybody $500 every single time there's a new idea that, you know, whatever. I mean, you, you can take it all the way from A to Z around that. Uh, last year, the, the 2018 Verizon data breach talks through some of the, some of the stats around a fish that sent is generally open in less than two minutes after it was sent. It's clicked on less than four minutes after it is sent, right? Which is, if you're one of these guys that are trying to get people to click on stuff, all you got to realize is it's happening. All I got to do is send in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these. 
my percentage, all I need is 1% to really live comfortably for the next couple years, right? So uh, then they, they noted, too, that the organized crime and state-affiliated actors are really using phishing. Why? It's really easy. Um, it happens, it works, uh, especially if you're trying to extort money. Um, then credentials gathering, again, um, click here because a bank of a, there's a bank alert or there is a an alert that says we've detected your user access credentials for your company has been used in another country click here to re-verify your credentials now they've got your user ID and password you know as administrator on whatever system right and then obviously cyber espionage part of our phishing company um, evaluation says that 91% of all hacking starts with a fish. Why? Is it easier to hack through a firewall, through an application, through those layers, or just in an email to, that now gets me on that system because I dropped a piece of software um, that's malware that gives me command and control? I would do this too. 91% of all hacks. 97% of people cannot identify but there's a special word there, sophisticated phishing email. Sophisticated meaning it looks exactly like who you would expect it to come from, FedEx, or your bank, B of A. Um, it is really, 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 really close to maybe the URL that they're using. They went and registered a domain for using, using this that's now FedEx tracking new shipments.com, which may not exist, right? But it's it's FedEx-ish, right? They've used, they cloned the email. It's the exact same color and font and everything. It looks really, really, really uh, good. And oh, by the way, to register a domain, if you don't know, it takes like three minutes, right? And then I can set up a MX record through uh, even Google, and I can probably do this in like 10 minutes and then send you, start sending emails. So that's why phishing is so prevalent. It's so easy. Um, so second quarter of this year, so far, these are the top 10 general email subject lines that have been seen by phishing companies today. Second quarter of just 2019. Um, as you can see, a lot of them are requiring immediate reaction by you. It's creating a, an emotional response. It's not just a, um, you know, there's a Nigerian prince in, uh, that's got money wanting to give you, and you're like, I don't know anybody over there, right? But these are the top ten of second quarter of this year. If you've gotten any of these, then hopefully you didn't click on them. So I'll give you a couple of examples from previous jobs where, where I did this. Uh, we had a Super Bowl. It was near the Super Bowl. We sent out a fish to all employees that says, hey, we've got a vendor. Blue Cross has a vendor that would like to donate two Super Bowl tickets. Or it's, you know, TVA has a vendor that wants to donate two Super Bowl tickets. Or the actual company, the hospital that I worked at where we did this. Again, insert name here, wants to donate two tickets. That... Please click here to register your interest in being in the drawing. That's all it said. And we will let you know on Friday if you won. So that particular hospital had 500 people click. There was about 10,000 people there, but they had 500 people that clicked on it. It says, I want tickets, please. So we got all those names of everybody who clicked. And on Friday, we sent an email to them. It says, congratulations, you won click here so they clicked we had 12 people oh the kicker about that is when they clicked the first time those 500 that clicked the first time that says yes we gave them a message a user education message that says this was a real fish these are the things you should have known and shouldn't have clicked on so we sent it to the 500 who clicked 12 people clicked on that one. 
We didn't tell them that time that this is fake. And we sent them to a page that says, provide your information so that we can send the tickets to you. And we just happened to label the field user ID and password. We had six people give their user ID and their password. Okay. And uh, he immediately went behind the scenes and changed all, made them change all their passwords. And you know they went straight from clicking to straight to phishing remediation class. Um, so that was an interesting one. Uh, we've had, now, as it relates to Father's Day and Valentine's at that same hospital, you know, those are, we, again, we're trying, these are holiday e-card. This is what we use. Um, we had an issue, and it's going to happen if you have it in your company, right? You're, you're going to see this. Is somebody goes, I just lost my father last week. You know, I, I don't appreciate you sending me these emails. Well, our take was, well, one, we don't know you lost your father. Sorry. And then two, the bad guys don't care. They're going to send you an email. They may ex actually exploit that and be looking at the obituaries to now send, you know, possibly fish you, spear fish you. Um, and then Valentine's card, we actually we had an issue there where we had somebody who deals with um, off hours as a social worker for people who have issues with intimacy and so forth and we're sending out so they thought it was rather crude of us to play on people's emotions um, but again the bad guys don't care so um, if you do something like this just know you may get some a little bit of blowback but uh, in all in all it's going to catch somebody every single time um, so some of the impacts came coming from the studies were what happens when you click there's either malware infection, there is compromised accounts, or loss of data. Um, that's, and now you can see the rise, or, or actually I should say, yeah, the rise in what's happened in between 2016 and 2017. Um, we're waiting, we'll wait, well, this will have another bar on it at the end of 2018. Uh, but this has come, this is from Wombat, one of the uh, phishing vendors. Uh, this may be hard to see out there. Um, so what this is showing is industries, where industries rate amongst themselves, uh, you know, from government, healthcare, insurance, financial, legal, education, energy, and manufacture. Uh, there's a couple dots and a couple graphs up here. So the susceptibility rate is the how many times, how, you know, how how often can you click? Uh, then there's this this vendor has a reporting rate. So as a phishing program, you really want your end users to report when they find one. Um, so they're saying that insurance, financial, and legal has a much better reporting rate, meaning maybe identification rate because they're reporting it. Um, maybe not because they're, they got high clicks. Um, and then there's a resiliency rate, which is a, a, a combination of uh, susceptibility and reporting uh, an average that they create. All right, so there's some source data here that's saying that fake invoices, number one type of phishing lure, uh, coming from Semantic from 2017. Again, hey, change our routing number, as, or hey, pay us for this work that we've done. Um, every single day, there's over 400 businesses that are targeted with the fake invoice or please change our account number, uh, business compromise email. Uh, the, the, each month, there's over 1.5 new phishing sites. All right, so where are you sending people when you say click here? Apple IDs are the number one target for credential theft emails, um, which is kind of interesting. Reports of W-2 phishing emails increased 870% in 2017. And if they get your name, which they already have probably, and they get you to provide some sort of level of, you know, let me verify my account information because I am the IRS asking you and they get into your account or they get your email or uh, date of birth and social in some way, shape, or form, yeah, W-2s is going to be the number one topic for that. 
in uh, SANS Institute is saying that 95% of all attacks on enterprise networks are the result of a successful spearfish, which mimics what we saw earlier that, what was it, 91% of all hacks start with a uh, fish. So, risk or annoyance? Yes, the answer is yes. It's a huge risk to an enterprise, it's a huge risk to an individual, and it's just a pain that we've got to deal with it, right? Um, now, as we talk about the most important factors around whether a user clicks on a fish, not, it's generally the content, the context. So, is it, are you getting a Valentine e-card in the month of November? Context isn't there, right? Um, are you getting a Super Bowl? You won Super Bowl tickets when it's not Super Bowl time, right? That kind of thing. Uh, are you getting uh, our, uh, our benefits are changing? We're going with a different insurance company. That's not your open enrollment, you know, sign up for new benefit time. So context is everything. And, and, these, guys, and these people, they know it. They know what to do when. Uh, so then there's the then there's a question of how are what's the bait they're using, right? Um, what's the climate? Is it are, are you is your company dealing with a highly uh, are you in a lawsuit? Is it highly charged? You know, would you be less apt to pay attention to it because a bunch of stuff is going on? You know, um, the time of day makes a big difference. So if they send it at 5:01 in the afternoon. You don't see it till tomorrow morning, which means there's maybe a whole lot of other emails and it kind of gets buried. So time of day, they're, they're gonna target the 8 a.m. to like 9 a.m. time frame for it to arrive in your mailbox. So one, it's at the top, and two, you're trying to get through all your emails quickly. They're also gonna target at 12.30 to 1.30. You just got back from lunch, you wanna clear out all your emails again. So there's some target, they might send it at like 4.30, hoping to get you to click on it because you're trying to get out of the office. So, um, again, if they happen to do a spearfish around it, they may know your emotional state. Again, you just lost your dad, it was in the obituaries or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so the question is, what can be done? Is it safe to go back into your email? So, uh, a, an example, we pulled a couple examples. Um, fictitious people, but uh, some of the things that you should look for is when you're looking at an email, Bank of America is misspelled, misspellings, right? Um, this account number, well, is that your account number? Probably not, right? But you're not paying attention to it. Um, they ask, they're asking you to follow this link and update your, oh, informations, informations, so if English isn't your first language, it may not make a big difference to you, which was some of what we're seeing. Um, now, again, when you hover over the URL, you'll see, hey, that goes to, well, that doesn't look like my bank's URL. And then, really, is the chief information officer at some bank going to send you? No. And, and if you happen to call his cell to find out if it's him, you're probably calling the bad guy who goes, yeah, that was my email. Please click on that. Uh, so iTunes. Tell me what's, what's wrong with, with that? Why that would look weird to you? I don't know either. I was just asking you. <laughs> no. Um, the apple turned the right way? I, yes, yeah. I'm not an apple guy. I don't know. Uh, but so here, here they're saying, dear iTunes user. Well, if you're getting an email and they happen to know who you are, wouldn't they say, dear Bob, potentially? Here, iTunes is not capitalized correctly, right? So you should see that. Um, then they're saying, do not reply to this email because I don't want it to come back. You, you just need to do what I'm telling you to do and click here. And then again, this says, this is not iTunes.com, is the URL, so. And then thanks for your time.
Yeah, that's how you would get a response from a customer support person, right? Probably not. So little tweaks, but a lot of times it may not make a difference. Uh, this is one I um, pulled this morning from from a from a website. I'm not going to read it all to you. There, there's a lot of a lot of text there, but I will start pointing out the things that are that are obvious. So wow, it popped up really quick. So Outlook Administrator Message Center Debt at Outlook.com. This is from Microsoft supposedly. So they're not going to use Outlook.com. It'll say Microsoft.com. Should be you know first thing. Plus that that from is really big and really painful. Uh, we detected something. Something? What did you detect? Right. Uh, recent activity to the Microsoft account, not your Microsoft account, not Bob's Microsoft account. The so um, to help keep you safe, we required. An extra security code. So that's a some English weirdness going on. Um, and then enjoy our unlimited service. Microsoft's giving you unlimited service? Okay. <laughs> uh, logging you logging in your Microsoft, not capitalized, account from blacklisted IP. Maybe from a blacklisted IP. So it's a, again, it's an English thing. Uh, thanks. Are they going to be really versus thank you? And then business something S N. It's 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 fictitious, right? So uh, it it's more wor not worrying sometimes when you see something that looks odd as to is the context correct for me? But now I got to look at the content. All right. So what do we do? User education. It's Personal education, it's user education, it's corporate e education um, from a program standpoint. Uh, more, so from a co corporate type perspective, phishing campaigns that go day in, at least monthly, right? Um, at least you start from a, from a grand perspective of um, phishing in general, not spear phishing, and now you start counting. How many people have clicked? How many people have reported? You create a baseline. You create some, uh, uh, you got to figure out, is it a carrot or a stick that you're going to use because people click? Um, the, the people, maybe you say, all right, for everybody who hasn't clicked this month, you go into a drawing for a new iPad? Or is it for everybody who's clicked this month, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll, you got to, I don't know, we're going to deduct your pay. I don't know, right? Um, uh, one of the things that w previous organization, if you clicked three times in a 12-month rolling window, you had to attend a mandatory one-hour phishing remediation class, right? So now we, we're going to give you all that kind of stuff to better zero you in on stuff. Um, but there's some technology. you got to have probably a platform to, to run this on. And then reporting. How are you reporting? Uh, we also, from a reporting standpoint, need to push it to the leaders of those groups, of those people, so that they can go, Bob, what are you doing? That's next month. You're going to have to go to class. And that you know that project. You know, too bad. You still got to go to class, um, which some people don't like. The oh, so. Early warning identifier. So, from a perspective of having people report the fish, is you can actually start using people as sentinels. Of this person always, always, always gets our scenario correct. So, therefore, anytime they report another fish to this special mailbox, they're probably detecting a fish, a real one, right? Um, so you can start, and then you can say if they got a fish and went and looked and said, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. And then we can start looking through the exchange server, through the other mail servers, through whatever the case may be, and go, ah, there were 50 other people who got the same email. Now we can look to see what's the email do when you execute it. Ah, it sends a, a link to a website. All right, now we can go look, did anybody click on it? Right, because we don't necessarily know, and if you ask them, they'll go, no, I didn't click. <laughs> but you can look in the, in the logs and see if that stuff happened, and then 
what may be the problem that it causes. So um, people can become an early warning identifier, and that's one of the things that we're focused on, trying to uh, it get those sentinel folks defined so for uh, any additional clicks that they may uh, receive. Uh, really common, this is, this is the point, and actually there's a couple others in my notes, is social engineering at its finest is focuses on your desire to be helpful. Um, spe you know, especially if it hits a customer service area, those people always want to try and be helpful to the customer. Well, it extends to emails they receive as well. Um, it's a tendency to trust people we know. So if you get um, an email from, uh, you know, your HR director that says, hey, PTO is changing, well, you probably believe that that's the right person with the right context sending you the right email. Uh, or the fear of getting in trouble. The CEO sends you an email that says, hey, you accountant, junior level person, I'm the CEO, you need to update that account for that client and change the bank routing number. Well, the CEO told me I've got to do it. Well, sometimes it's fear of trying to, of getting in trouble, right? And the other one that's not on here is either greed or, or, or curiosity. Again, curious of what that package is that just got delivered to your house even though you're not expecting one. Yeah, right? Um, and I'll end the presentation with, um, I'd like to discuss any questions you might have. Click here. So I'll open it up for questions. So the question is in terms of uh, technology that's in place to, you have to register if you get an email from, from somebody potentially. Generally speaking, um, it's, it's due, that's due to an encrypted email that contains potentially restricted type of data um, that we would send as an email that encrypts it that you have to then go uh, register to read the envelope and then get the message. Um, that's for outbound. Um, inbound, it, we've got some other technologies that trying to, well, you got your normal spam filters and so forth and so on, right? Um, uh, reputation based so that some of these fishes might not come in, but when they're registering 135,000 domains, what was it a day or a week or whatever, those reputation services don't keep up real well. Yeah, so from a, um, it could be, um, what is it? The DNS services provide black holing of, of, of DNSs that have reputations that are just bad based on, you know, that. It, and now what happens with those is yesterday you got, a, you got an email from that domain. Well, it also sent, you know, 500 million of them yesterday. Well, the reputation service went way down, and then today nobody will get a new one. Right, so that's that's why there's some complexity in not relying on those because it's just not daily. So one of the ways that we've got um, so from a corporate email system with Outlook running. Uh, we've got a button that's embedded into the toolbar. So when you highlight this mess, this email, and you go, "Oh, that looks fishy," you just click the button, and what it, and it takes it and sends it to a special mailbox for review, and takes it out of your email box as well. Um, but that's how we're doing it. That that then becomes something that we can look at. Um, yes and no. It, it's a capability that that's, that uh, it requires a lot of single eye to glass um, looking, um, which means 
every fish that every reported fish that comes in, you'd have to execute it and do this and do that. So we're actually looking at how do we automate a lot of that so that it can go and check, hey, this fish was just reported. Let's go check against some of these other technologies from automated, let it execute here, here, and here, and then basically get information back. And then we'll take the ones that are positive and then execute those related to, well, did it actually go out of the organization? How many people clicked on it? How many people got it if it was real? Versus, well, that's just spam that just made it in because it came in, was created yesterday and wasn't an actual fish. So uh, I'll tell you the, the three top ones, um, which is, it, it used to be called Fish Me, which is now CoFence. Um, there is Wombat, and there's No Before. Um, now, there are some of the learning vendors um, that have fish tools, um, but they're, those are the three big ones that are out there in the market today. No, we, we, have, we happen to use a... Uh, a purchase service in in um, you mean in terms of sending out fishes yeah. um, so there are so there's any number of awareness articles that, that happen, right? So we, we have articles written from our corporate comm perspective that, that go out. People read them. Uh, we've got click rates. We know click rates. Um, a lot of our, some of our corporate emails like that, um, we try not to put any kind of links here in it. We just, it's just content um, to get people to read. So that happens as much as we can get. We've got you know, monitor type stuff that's going out that we put article, you know, it was images, right? That like the whole don't get hooked and uh, different, different things. Uh, the, and then we have uh, possibilities of, of pushing out uh, education modules through our LMS that says, hey, um, if you're interested, go do this. But the, for the people who get click three times, that, that's a monthly. We have that, at, 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 if not once, but twice a month where we have classes for, for remedial training. So, Dante, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everyone.